From Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report, our top stories this week. The 2.7 billion rand Val River Eastern Subsystem Augmentation Project starts delivery of water to ESCOM and Sassel in Mpumalanga. South Africa takes a milestone step towards carbon capture and storage. And a safety equipment manufacturer launches two new models. ESCOM's new power stations and Sassel's increasing fuel production has resulted in the need for the Val Pipeline project. Brindavani Naidu reports. The 2.7 billion and 121 kilometer pipeline Val River Eastern Subsystem Augmentation Project started delivering water to the mothballed and new ESCOM power stations and to Sassel in the Mpumalanga province this month to meet growing water demands. So how important is this project to Sassel and ESCOM? The project is central to security of water supply in our sinfuel plant. As you know, our process requires a combination of coal and steam for it to operate efficiently. And so far we have we had started to hit the limit in terms of the amount of water that was available. And this project, what this project does is to open up our ability to grow and therefore be able to meet the demand for fuel in South Africa. ESCOM CEO Jacob Morocco says that FreeSAP is part of a greater infrastructure program that will play a key role in stimulating South Africa's economy. In South Africa, we're going through a, a very big infrastructure development. Ourselves, we're looking at about 385 billion over the next five years. And collectively, when you start looking at all state-owned enterprises, I think that figure is about 800 billion, 800 billion in the next five years. Now, that infrastructure is key to making sure that we've got the, the services that we require, power, rail, etc., and water. But it's also critical now when we have this global economic slowdown. Now, having an infrastructure development stimulates the economy while you, you're managing the crisis. So it, this, this, this is part of it, and uh, over the next few years, that's going to be also key in stimulating the economy as the global economy remains challenging. Water is very important to the production of power. Uh, water and coal are the, the most important ingredients of uh, uh, production of power. So making sure that we have an infrastructure that allows us to go through air times when we've got droughts and also allows for the growth in the production of power in Mpumalan. In light of South Africa's increasing demand for water, one has to ask how important is this free sub project to ESCOM, Sassel and the average South African citizen. Quite simply put, no water equals no electricity or fuel. Brindavani Naidu, Crema Media Television, Midval Municipality. The South African National Energy Research Institute has launched the South African Centre for Carbon Capture and Storage. Chanel Pringle has the story after the commercial break. Fetch, so fetch! Mitsubishi Fuso, a business's best friend. The center, which was launched in March, will focus on developing the human and technical capacity to ensure that South Africa is ready to implement carbon capture and storage where necessary. Minerals and Energy Minister Bialwa Sunjika says the center is an important step towards finding a practical solution for mitigating the coal-based economy's high CO2 emissions. South Africa has a strong and well reputation when it comes to mining operations. It is blessed with considerable mineral resources, sometimes holding the world's largest deposits. We know how to cost-effectively extract the wealth of the earth and make it available to the markets. The Center for Carbon, Carbon Capture and Storage's job now is to tap that expertise and apply it to the safe geological storage of carbon dioxide. She adds that the centre will contribute to the development of climate change mitigation technology that is much needed by the South African state. Indeed, this is a milestone for South Africa. It is a milestone for Africa. 
The centre is a partnership between Sineri, the Norwegian government, the British High Commission and other local companies. Global safety product manufacturer and supplier MSA Africa is about to launch its latest thermal imaging camera, enhancing safety and rescue operations. The Evolution 5800 is the latest innovation in MSA's thermal imaging camera range and follows on the successful Evolution 5200 HD2 camera. Firefighters have been using thermal imaging cameras as an invaluable tool for search and rescue operations. In addition, the cameras can be applied in the law enforcement field to enhance police officers' safety. MSA product manager Dermesh Lakmidis explains the added features and benefits of the company's latest offering. Well, the 5800 uh, series camera uh, has a microbolometer oxide sensor uh, which gives you excellent uh, picture quality. It has up to 76,000 pixels and even in low sense mode and high sense mode you're not going to get any contrast in picture quality. Uh, the camera has been approved by the National Fire Prevention Association standards so it survives quite harsh standards as well in terms of uh, ingress of dust and water and uh, drop tests as well. Uh, the camera also has safety features built in it. It has an automatic shutter which warns you in case the camera is exposed to very high temperatures. So the uh, camera will automatically switch off. Meanwhile, the company has also improved on its multi-gas detector range with the release of the Altair 5 multi-gas detector. Gas detectors are used in the fire services, petrochemicals, steel and iron, and the wastewater and construction industries. The Alt F5 unit is one of the most unique uh, added features to the unit. It's got a motion alert sensor. The motion alert sensor activates when a person is incapacitated or falls down or is injured. So within 30 seconds, the alarm will trigger or activate. It also has an instant alert alarm feature. So within a certain amount of period or time, a person can automatically activate the alarm on the instrument. For The Real Economy Report in Johannesburg, I'm Fatima Gabru. And now for a sneak preview of this week's Engineering News magazine. Read our cover story on South Africa's new housing development agency, which hopes to deal decisively with the land acquisition constraint to housing delivery. We report that the newly formed Passenger Rail Agency of South Africa has aspirations for 560 new coaches a year to meet expected demand. And we report that the 13,700 km Seacom cable connecting Africa to India and parts of Europe will be ready for service by mid-year. And in Mining Weekly this week, read about South African Finance Minister Trevor Manuel's mid-year tax break introduction, which seeks to assist junior mining companies in accessing equity finance. We report that South Africa's Department of Minerals and Energy has launched a draft beneficiation strategy. And read about the strategy that's been implemented to save Pomodzi Gold and the 15,000 jobs that the company provides. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insight into South Africa's real economy. Prima Media's engineering news has delivered unmatched insight into the real economy. For breaking news, visit engineeringnews.co.za. The engineering news, not just for engineers.